Well, this evening we have a very special guest with us. Joan Steer is going to come forward here in just a minute and share her testimony. From what I understand of it, um, she had some sort of accident. Um, I'm not sure of all the details, but um, Sister Donelda had approached me about it last week and said she had a wonderful testimony and just something really great to share of what God's done in her life. So we're eager to hear it, and we thank you for coming to share it with us. Um, I just started bearing weight on Friday, so I'm not, don't want to do the steps without holding on to something. <laughs> um, this, oh, this is fine. This is fine. Uh, this past November 13th, um, it, we had a little bit of snow on the ground that day. It was pretty cold, and I was driving on Yankee, approaching the light at M60 there, when um, that's all I remembered for the next three and a half days. But my story's not over, because other people tell me what happened was I must have hit some black ice, which threw me um, into a tree, the tree coming into the, to my door, the driver's door there. And um, I was... Um, pulled out by the EMTs and the police very carefully through the other door, and I was taken to Memorial Hospital where I was in the ICU for a couple days, and when I went in there, they have a scale that, just like when babies are born, they put them on an APGAR scale rating how healthy they are. Uh, there's a scale that they have. Three is the lowest, meaning not conscious, and 15 is the highest, meaning fully conscious. I got a three. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Um, so my skull was fractured in five places. Several, about six vertebrae were cracked. My pelvis was broken in three places. And I had damage to the artery in my neck. Um, they weren't sure if I would survive or not, or if I did, what the extent of brain damage would be um, and other skills. So um, my children came in from different states. And my husband tells me they said they didn't know if they were coming to a funeral or to a long recovery, which is what the doctors told them would probably be as a real long recovery, and they didn't know if I'd, what the extent of the brain damage would be or anything else. But we have a great God. Amen. And this church I know prayed for me, my church, and several, many others, uh, thanks to Facebook, you know, <laughs> can be used for good, good ways. Many people prayed, and it was very amazing what happened. Um, the doctor's concerns were, first of all, brain swelling. And if it sw swelled much more than it already had, they would have to do surgery. And of course, all the other breaks and everything. But our God is so great. They didn't have to do, the swelling never reached it, so I had, didn't have to have brain surgery. I didn't have to have any surgery with all those breaks. God is so great. He just makes me laugh. It's like, you know, the enemy thinks he's doing you in, and it's the end of your days, and God says, no, no, no. <laughs> you know? Uh, and it was not. And even the doctors and nurses and the therapists, people along the way, would read my m medical record of what just happened. Then they'd talk to me and they'd say, this doesn't fit this person. How can this be? This is not what we expected at all. And that long recovery, I was back home in 10 days. Um, Praise the Lord. He is amazing. It's not at all what they expected, but it's what we can expect from the kind of God that we have. So anytime you're you kind of attempted to think this praying doesn't make any difference. That's a lie. It makes a big difference. It made a big difference for me. People were praying for me when I couldn't pray for myself. And uh, God said yes. So keep praying. Thank you very much. Thank you. It reminds me a little bit of Sister Maxine's testimony this morning. She said that even through all the down times when she was sick, you know, she was experiencing Jesus Christ and his grace and his presence in her life. And she referred to it. She's this dear lady right here in front of you has been sick for about five or six weeks. And uh, she's finally back with us. And she was testifying this morning that through all of that time that she was thick, sick and feeling awful, that Christ was right there with her through every step of it. And it reminded me so much of your testimony that even with all the fractures and the skull fractures and the back fractures and the pelvis fractures, Jesus Christ was right there through all of it, walking her through every step. She referred to it this morning as the prepping room. Jesus has got us in a prepping room. You don't just go to work on something. You got to get it ready to work on it. 
ready for the final coat. Amen. And that's, uh, <laughs> amen. He's getting us all ready for a final coat. Do we have any other testimonies tonight of what God has done in your life? Sister Bullock's got a testimony to share with us. I appreciate the opportunity of sharing this with you to give God the glory because it, it belongs only to him. I don't know if you remember, for one, a couple of weeks ago, I, w I was absent uh, for about two Sundays. I had been ill for about two weeks. I had contracted a flu. I think I had a, some kind of bad flu along with the stomach flu. I had two flus at one time, and I had been sick for almost three weeks, praying, trusting the Lord, didn't go to the doctor, waiting on God, knowing that God is able for all things, knowing that he is the God of heaven and the God of earth and this earthen vessel as well. But uh, after almost three weeks, my family was, you know, pressing me to say, you need to go to the doctor, find out what was going on. I had been dizzy. I was so dizzy the first couple of days, dizzy and nauseous that I couldn't even walk. Olin had to help me to the restroom, and I just had no strength in my body. But... Um, had gone through almost three weeks, decided, well, I was still having the headaches, and I thought, well, maybe my ears were plugged, and, and, and sometimes when that happens, um, you know, it makes you dizzy and woozy. So I sort of irrigated my ears at home, and I still was dizzy, so I thought, well, maybe I didn't do a good enough job. So I went to urgent care, and um, while sitting there in the, in the uh, room talking with the doctors, a wave of something came over me and I thought I was going to pass out and the doctor got very concerned. They rushed me off by ambulance to the hospital. They thought I was having um, a stroke. But God knew what was going on. I didn't, they didn't, and I, I was in the emergency room and they, they did, um, I had an um, MRI, they didn't find anything, praise the Lord. They we went, I had blood tests. They didn't find anything with that. They just didn't know what was going on. So the nurse came in. She was going to give me something for the headache and the nausea. And uh, as soon as she began to infuse whatever she was giving me, I said to her, I said, why do I feel strange? I mean, immediately I began to feel this strange something. And she says, the nurse says, well, I don't know. Um, your vitals look good. And I said, I feel really, really strange. And um, so she didn't seem to be bothered too much. And I be I, it, my fingers began to tingle. My toes began to tingle. And saints of God, I, this is going to sound very strange to you, but my body felt flat. I felt like I was just flattening out on that bed. Sandra was there with me, and I started praying. I started calling on the Lord because I sincerely believed that my life was leaving my body. I felt like I was dying. My blood pressure shot up 200 over 100 and something. And I'm praying. I'm saying, God, I'm your child, and you have said that whatever we ask when we pray, if we believe it, we shall have it. I said, Lord, I'm asking you for my life. I said, I'm asking you for my life. And I said, Sandra, pray. So I started, I was praying with them, but I started praying out loud. And Sandra said, there were three people, three nurses in the room. Well, I needed to call on my father because I needed my father. They didn't know what was wrong with me. And she claimed that she was only giving me saline. I, to this day, believe she gave me something wrong. And it had an extreme effect on me, an immediate effect on me. But praise God, he was there with me. He protected me from whatever they gave me. And I'm so grateful that we can call on the Lord. And through all that, I'm laying there thinking that I'm dying. This is it. But I was able to call on one who had the power of life in his hands. I do thank him for his, for his moving upon me. His grace is, is sufficient, and I just appreciate his mercy. You spoke of mercy this morning. He has abundant mercy, and I praise him for his mercy, for his healing power, for his protection. From whatever they gave me, he protected me from that, and I praise him for it. Amen. Thank you, sister. Wonderful testimony. Any others tonight? of what God has done for you in your life.
If not, I have a few thoughts that I'd like to share with you this evening. Wonderful testimonies here in this congregation. Well, it's on. All right, good. But there are a lot of wonderful testimonies. We could probably be here until tomorrow at this time, nonstop with the things that God has done in different individual lives here and testimonies um, of his power, of his mercy, of his goodness, his grace to us. But tonight we want to turn to Psalms chapter 34 for just a few minutes. This passage of scripture has been on my heart for a while now. Um kind of in conjunction with what I've been talking about the last couple of Sunday nights and how that we as a congregation and as the people of God need to reach out to the community around us, to our family, to our friends and to share the love of God with them. To share in a practical way. Demonstrate to them the love of God. Amen. Each and every one of us can do that. We can, practice, we can share with somebody else in a practical way the love of God. We can demonstrate it to them. You don't have to be specially gifted. You don't have to have any kind of special talents. Your day-to-day -day activities can be used to share the love of God with somebody. And it takes a willing heart, and I think it also takes uh, a willing attitude, um, a certain amount of zeal and excitement about your experience of Jesus Christ. That's why I'm so thankful that Joan came and shared her experience with us. She's out there demonstrating and showing the love of God, what he did for her in her life, how he healed her, how he was there for her and protected her in what could have been a life-threatening. It could have taken her life, except for the power of God. There's a lot of people that don't come out of situations like that. All we've got to do is watch the headlines. Probably before the end of the month, there will be somebody that's in a very similar crash that doesn't make it out of it. But that's to the glory and the honor and the praise of our God. So I'm so thankful to see a woman inspired with zeal to get up and to tell her story and to tell of the love of God. And you might not have that great and miraculous experience. But what kind of talents do you do have? How can you really show the love of God? Is your experience up to date? Is it still new and fresh and exciting to you? Your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because if you've got that excitement, if it's still a thrill to your soul, and you go sharing it with somebody else, they're going to want some. Amen? Let's read in Psalms chapter 34. And we're going to read uh, 1 through... Well, 1 through 12, 1 through 11, somewhere right in there. Psalms 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto Him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord. Ye his saints, for there is no want in them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, 
Hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. I picked this passage of Scripture because of verse 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. That is the burden of my heart for this congregation. And I, if, if I'm not into themes usually. I'm not a real big theme person. But um, for some reason this has been pounding away in my head. And this is our theme, folks. This is what I want to be the theme of Culture's Chapel. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I want everyone in here to have an experience of Jesus Christ that's so fresh, that's so real, that's so vital to their life that they go out into this world and they speak to their friends and they speak to their acquaintances and they speak to their neighbor and they speak to the woman down at the bank. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Not that you necessarily use those words, but your experience is so vibrant that that's the message that comes across in all that you do and all that you interact in. Amen. My wife used to fix me lunch every day when I would go to the job. Now, I know that sounds crazy. I owned a pretty big company, had lots of guys working for me, and my wife would still fix me lunch. But you know what? When she fixed something that was really good, it was just awesome. You know, went above and beyond, you know, those kind of meals, right? All you guys, you better raise your hands. I know your wives have fixed you meals that went above and beyond what the usual is. I was excited. I would say, hey, hey guys, y'all need to try this. Check out what my wife fixed. Amen. And now that was just literal food. That was literal things. Think how much more excited we should be to share spiritual things that God has done for us. Our experience of salvation. Our relationship with Jesus Christ. Hey guys, taste this. Try some of this. This is good. That's the attitude that I would like to see this church develop. Our congregation develop in our day-to-day -day activities. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now how you go about that can look a lot of different ways. It can have a lot of different manifestations of how you make that happen in your life. And first of all, you have to have that experience before you can share it with somebody else. If you've got a plain old cold peanut butter and jelly sandwich, not too many people want to share that with you. You don't have much to share. Amen? Now, I didn't know I was going to get on spiritual peanut butter and jelly, but anyway... Do you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that walk around and their experience of Jesus Christ and their relationship with Him is stale and it's cold and it's old and it's not up to date, it's not fresh, and it's nothing that anybody else wants a part of. Amen. Nobody wants a part of that. So you need to be vibrant. You need to go to the Lord. What did Isaiah say? Those that wait upon the Lord, their strength shall be renewed. Amen. Now I understand that sometimes you get cold. Sometimes you get a little weak. Sometimes you need a lift. Amen. We all go through spiritual cycles where it's a little up and a little down. Now you shouldn't be going like this and then like this and then like this. But there are those little cycles of spiritual um, life. Where it's hot, it's a little cooler. But I'm telling you that those that wait upon the Lord, their strength shall be renewed. That means at one time their strength was strong, and somehow it waned, somehow it waxed, it got a little cool. But it can be renewed. So wherever you are tonight, there is the possibility that you can grow from there, and you can have more power. Your relationship with Jesus Christ can be fresher and more vibrant and more real than it ever was before. And then you can go out into your family, to your friends, to your acquaintances and say, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because He is good. We've just seen a prime example of how good God is. He took a woman whose body was broken and beaten. They had her on a chart of 3 to 15. They had her a 3. Amen. But God don't go by charts. Amen. God don't go by numbers. They could have put her at a 2. And He could have brought her back to a 15. Amen. That's the God that we serve. And that's the God that we need to be taking out into the community. Taste and see that the Lord is good. In everything, He's good. In His mercy, He's good. Amen. 
There's a lot of people that their experience I wouldn't want to share with them. I'm not saying that any of you are in that neighbor or in that group. I'm not in the labeling business. I just asked you to examine your own self, to look at your own heart, to look at your own experience, and assess it for yourself with honesty before God so that you can have something that somebody else wants. Do you have something tonight that somebody else wants? Amen. Do you have something that you can share? Do you have something that you're excited about? Did you learn something in the message this morning that excited you, that thrilled you, that renewed you a little bit? Amen. There you go. That's a beginning. Take it and share it. Share it. They say that um, the beggars in the big cities, if they find a place where they can get some food, they'll mark it in some way. Why do they mark it? So that the next beggar that comes along sees the mark and says, hey, we can get some food there. We can get something there. We ought to be little spiritual mileposts along the way, little marks. You can get something there. They taste and see that the Lord is good. The psalmist here is excited. He is very excited. If you read there in verse 3, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. What's he doing? He's putting out the invitation to all those around him. Come, come, let's see. Let's magnify the Lord together. Let's exalt Him. Come taste and see that He is good. Taste and see what I've experienced. Have a little piece of it. When we gather here in this place, this is the attitude that we should bring with us. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. That's the attitude that I try to bring. Amen. When I come here on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Sunday night, that's the attitude that I try to bring. Let's magnify the Lord together. Amen. Now, some days I might be down a little bit. I might be a little flat. There might be a lot of things that are stressing my mind. But that ought to be the prevailing attitude amongst us as a people of God. Let's exalt God's name together. Because there's great, there's great blessing in praise. Why is there great blessing? In verse 4 he says, I sought the Lord and He heard me. I sought the Lord and He heard me. We just heard tonight of a lady, her family sought the Lord. This church sought the Lord for her. And the Lord heard us. And the Lord delivered her. And we can go around this congregation and we can point out time and time again where we have sought the Lord and He heard us. Therefore, He is worthy of our praise. Therefore, He is worthy of being exalted and magnified by us, His people, glorified in His temple. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. And when we go out of here, we don't... If you have that kind of praise, if you have that kind of experience when you come to worship God, you ain't going to go out of here and... Oh, this weather and our... I see so many Christians that walk around with no zeal, no excitement, no life whatsoever, and it disturbs me. Every little thing upsets their apple cart. They develop attitudes. I'm talking to human beings, I know. You can go like this. Mm hmm. Because it's happened. It's happened, Sister Kate. Amen. Yep. Brother Fraser, yes, it's happened. Why? Because we don't keep our focus on the things that are, should be the priorities of our life. God, His kingdom, the kingdom of God, kingdom of righteousness, holiness, and peace should be the priority of every moment of our lives. Amen. All the other little stuff is trivial. It's all going to melt away with fervent heat. No matter how many dollar bills you stack up, there's no insulation that's going to preserve them from that heat. Because it's all going to melt with fervent heat according to 2 Peter. Amen? So don't worry. Don't get upset. Don't let the little things destroy 
your peace, your joy, your experience, and your relationship with God. Don't let it take away from your opportunity to reach out to the community around you, your family, your friends, and say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. That word blessed there in the Hebrew, translated into English, is happy. Happy is the man who trusteth in him. Amen. Happy is the man. I found it to be so. I know it to be so. I've experienced it, and I can confirm what the psalmist said. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. When you trust in yourself, when you rely in your own abilities, and your own power, your own strength, your own savings account, there's not a whole lot of happiness in that. But when you trust in the Lord, you will truly be happy. We need an experience that's up to date. There in verse 9 it says, Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Now we're not talking about a coward, cowardly terror. We're talking about a godly awe or reverence. Oh, fear the Lord. Oh, give him his proper place in your life. Give him his proper perspective in your life. Not where you run around terrified, but oh, fear the Lord. Oh, have reverence for him, ye saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. If you live a life that's godly and righteous and reverencing God, you will never want. You will have all your needs supplied by his grace. Amen. All your needs supplied. Not your every desire. Because we all have things that, oh man, I'd like to have this and I'd like to have that, right? Amen. We all got big dreams. God didn't promise you all your big dreams. This is not the prosperity gospel. He said he would supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. That's his word. That's his promise. And he will be true to it in every facet of your life and my life. And when he is, that ought to excite us. When he is faithful in healing, when he is faithful in provision, when he is faithful in all these aspects of human existence, we ought to say, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let his words of testimony be upon your lips in all that you do. We need an experience that will produce that mindset or the mindset of the psalmist here in verses 1 through 3. Because when we have that mindset, when we have that kind of experience, it's contagious. It is a contagious thing. If you get around somebody who's excited about what they have or what they're doing, you cannot help but be drawn in by that excitement and by that zeal. This is where Christianity has fallen by the wayside in a lot of places. There's no more excitement. There's no more zeal. Therefore, they don't attract or don't draw anyone into them. Oh, how we need this because it is so contagious. We need to demonstrate through our words. We need to demonstrate the love of God through our words. We need to demonstrate that excitement through our words. Words of encouragement, words of love, words of testimony, and words of exhorting. We need to have that kind of experience in our prayers. I'm not talking about just the words of our prayers, but I'm talking about the activity of prayer. You want to tell somebody, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good? Let them, let them see, let them actually visually see you be faithful in prayer. When you meet somebody down at the mall and they say, you know, I've got some real problems going on. My kids have gone wild. My daughter's pregnant and she's not married and all these other things. Let's pray. Does everybody in here know how to pray? Do you know how to pray when you're at the mall? Is God at the mall? Is God at the gas station? Do you know how much impact it has when you take somebody's hand and say, let's pray about it right now? It's easy to say, I'll pray for you. I'll keep you in my prayers. I'll put you on my prayer list. Man, some people must have a prayer list this long. Grab a hand. You want to create some excitement? You want to create some desire? You want to be contagious? Grab a hand. Let's pray. 
and it's not necessarily words. You might not be, you might not have a whole big vocabulary of words to use in prayer. It's not necessary. Amen. All you got to say is my father. Here's a dear one that needs you. You know their circumstances. You know their troubles. It's not the words. It's the faithfulness. It's the faithfulness. It's the reliance on God that is contagious to people. That's part of tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. Another way that we can do it is through our actions and our deeds. I talked to you, I, I don't know if it was last Sunday night or the Sunday night before, about doing some things, some activities here at the church that we can demonstrate to, in a practical way the love of God to our community, to the people who are running up and down the road here. I marvel at the number of cars that go up and down this road. There must be a thousand souls or more that go up this road every day. If we can reach out to ten of them, that's, that's a minuscule amount out of the thousands that go by. If we get ten of them, that we can demonstrate the love of God in a practical way. We're showing forth the kingdom of God. Through our actions and our deeds. Now that idea has blossomed. Um, I'm going to talk to the youth about it, but it's not up to the youth to do all the evangelistic work of this congregation. It's up to each and every one of us to do that. It's up to each and every one of us to go out into the world and say, taste and see that the Lord is good. We can demonstrate and we can be contagious through our humility. Did you ever think about that? If you lead a humble life, if you're a humble person in public, in your interactions, in your transactions with people, you could be contagious through that. In some way, you can say through your humility, taste and see that the Lord is good. We can be contagious through our trust and through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Through our compassion, through our experience of salvation, through our excitement and through our zeal. We can be contagious through our commitment to God's Word. And we can be contagious by the priorities and values that we have in our life. And that's where I really want to see us grow as a congregation. And what we prioritize and what we place value on. Amen. If you haven't looked around you lately, there's a lot of gray heads. Almost every church that I visit, there's a lot of gray heads. Amen. It's not gonna, you're not all going to be here forever. We have to win some souls. Only God can do the saving. We know that. But you know what He uses? He uses instruments. He uses vessels to reach out to a world. And we are those instruments. We are the vessels here at Culture's Chapel to reach this world. So let us go out and say, taste and see that the Lord is good. Examine your relationship. Examine your experience with Christ. Is it, is, is it as exciting as it once was? Is it contagious? Just questions. Just questions that I want you to take with you. And I'm here to tell you that if you don't feel like it's exciting and you don't feel like it's contagious, God can make it that way. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord, their strength shall be renewed. He can change whatever the situation is. But come springtime, we've got a lot of things planned. And I would love for as many of you as possible to be involved with the different activities that we're you know, right now we're just tossing around out ideas. We, ha we don't have anything in concrete. But we want to be evangelistic this year in our outreach to the community. And part of that, the theme of that is taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. There's some of you folks that are not able to do a lot of physical work. You can be the prayer warriors. You can be the encouragers. You don't have to get out and do a lot of physical work. There's plenty of young bodies to do that. I'll do my share. Amen. But be ready to reach out and be contagious to your community. I thank you for your attention tonight.
I pray that I give you something to think about. Something to consider. The world is a increasingly dark place between politics and um, just society in general, the things that once you never would have even dreamed of hearing, we hear almost on a daily basis now. We need to be the light that counteracts that. There has to be somebody out there sharing love. There has to be somebody out there showing a light. There has to be somebody out there living truth. Amen. There has to be. Or the darkness wins. Amen. In a lot of people's lives, the darkness is winning. You can go through, they're bound by all kinds of habits. Whether they be drugs or alcohol or sex, you name it. The devil's got something for every one of them. So let us go forth as the people of God, carrying his word, his light, in a way that's contagious. In a way that we can say, try this. Taste this. And see how good it is. I know it's a silly example, but I can't get away from the example of my wife's cooking. Boy, when she really hits the nail on the head, I want to share it with everybody. Because it's so good. And I'm so proud of her. It's like, my wife is awesome. Guess what? My God is awesome. My God is awesome. And I want you to know him. And I want you to experience him for yourself. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for your word. Father, we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, to provide a way for our salvation for our eternity, Lord. We're so grateful for that. Father, we're so grateful that you sent your Holy Spirit to live within us, to motivate us, to drive us, to teach us, to lead us and guide us. Father, we're so thankful for that. Lord, as we go into this new year, we just pray, Father, that you would lead us into paths that will put us in front of souls that need to know you. Father, renew within each and every one of us a new heart, a new mind. Father, give us that excitement and that zeal that comes with a true experience of knowing you, of knowing your love and your power and your grace and your mercy. Father, help us to be contagious. Help us to go out into this lost world and say, taste. Come, there's something better than what you got. Father, help us to say, taste and see that the Lord is so good. Father, not that we could be glorified in any way, but that more might come to know you, come to know your love, and your mercy and your grace that's been so abundantly poured out. Father, I pray for your help for this congregation, for myself. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me strength. Give me understanding. I'm just a man, Lord. I need you every step of the way. This congregation needs you every step of the way. Father, you see our desire to see souls one into the kingdom of God. And we look to you, Lord, knowing that we can't do it of ourselves. We have no power. Zero. We know that you have all power and all authority. Father, we just ask that you would help us as we labor here in these fields. We'll give you the praise. We'll come home rejoicing with our sheaves. In Jesus' name, amen.